uh, my fellow learners, uh, Mr. Mbopa, I'll be taking you through animal nutrition. Uh, and by the end of this presentation, I will expect you to be able to define animal nutrition, to know the importance of animal nutrition in animals, so that, uh, and again, you'll be able to classify the types of animals that we have, and you also need to be able to differentiate between maintenance ration and production ration. And secondly, the terminology that you need to master in this particular topic is ruminants. You need to know what the ruminants are, monogastric, uh, as well as maintenance and production ration. Uh, what is animal nutrition? Animal nutrition is the provision of feed to animals, how it is digested, uh, absorbed, so that these animals will be able to meet their physiological needs. I would like to repeat that one. It is the provision of feed to animals, how it is digested and absorbed, so these animals will be able to meet their physiological needs. Now, for example, the physio physiological needs of animals Animals need feed so that they'll be able to what? To grow. Animals need feed so that they, they will be able to what? To produce. Animals also need feed so that they will be able to reproduce. And finally, they also need feed for uh, maintenance. Now, for growth, production, and reproduction. You need a well-specialized feed because these animals are on production. They need feed so that they'll be able to grow, to produce milk if it's a dairy breed, or to produce eggs if it's a layer, or to produce offsprings in the case of reproduction. And again, in the case of maintenance, you just give this type of feed to these animals so that they'll be able to survive. Now, this lends us to the types of rations we have got the maintenance ration and we have got the production ration. Now, the maintenance ration is the type of ration or a feed that is given to animals that are not producing. And then the production ration is the feed that is given to animals in addition to maintenance reproduction. Take, for example, if we have got a castrated bull, which is an ox, and we have got a daily bridge that produces milk. Now, these two animals cannot be given the same feed. They are fed based on the physiological status of their production because this animal needs to maintain itself, and on top of that, it also needs to produce milk. So this particular animal can be given a production ration, and the ox, on the other hand, is only given a maintenance ration because it only uh, consumes feed so that it will be able to maintain itself for body composition purposes. And then classification of animals. Now we've got uh, the animals that we keep on farm. For example, a cattle, a sheep, a goat, a pig, and a chicken. Now these animals are classified or they are categorized according to the ruminants and the non-ruminants. Now the example of monogastric animals are pigs and chicken. Now the example of ruminant animals are cattle, sheep, and goats. Now, one would wonder, how do we classify these uh, two types of animals? Ladies and gentlemen, these animals are classified, are classified based on the structure of their stomachs. Now, the, 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 the monogastric have got one stomach, hence the name monogastric. Mono means one. Gastric means stomach. So these are the kind of animals that has got only one stomach. And in the case of uh, ruminants, these are the types of animals that have got more than one stomach. For example, a, a, a cattle, a sheep, and a goat have got four stomachs. They are four chambered uh, animals. So uh, in assessments, when you are asked or you are given a picture on question two to differentiate between the two animals, in, in most cases, you will be given uh, two pictures, a monogastric and a, a ruminant. Now, the most important thing that you need to check when you're answering these types of questions, you need to, 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 to read the keywords. If the question says classify or name the type of an animal, now in that particular case, you need to know that you will need to um, maybe write monogastric 
if you're asked to classify or name the type of animal. Name the type of an animal, classify, that is when you write monogastric or ruminant, if it's a ruminant. Now, in other cases, you can be asked to identify or name the farm, the farm animal. Identify, name the farm animal. Now, in that particular case, you are asked to give the name of an animal, which is our examples in this particular uh, presentation. Like, for example, it can be a pig or it can be a chicken because they are all monogastric. But you need to be careful in the, in, in the examples because the alimentary canal or the gastrointestinal tract of the pig and the chicken are different. But we'll go through that on the next slide. And then coming to the uh, ruminants. Ruminants, uh, uh, like I've said before, the example of ruminants are cattle, sheep, and goats. They have got the same alimentary canal. So when you are asked to give the examples of the monogastric animals, when you are asked to name the animal, or when you are asked to identify the animal, you can say sheep, you can write uh, cattle, you can even write goat because they are all the same. But in the case of ruminants, you need to be specific if this particular monogastric is a pig or is a chicken. Now, I want you learners to be very uh, extra cautious when you're articulating those types of uh, questions. Now, let's go to the internal structure of a pig. There is our pig. And like I've said before, the types of monogastric animals that we have are pigs and chicken. Like I've said before, you can see there is only one stomach in that particular pig. The mono means one, gastric means stomach. Now, moving to the next uh, picture, which is a chicken. And then again, the chicken has got what? Only one stomach here. It is also called what? A simple stomach. But here, you need to, 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 to check the difference. Here in the esophagus of a chicken, you can see there is a crop. Now, when you go back uh, to the pig, there is no uh, a crop in the esophagus of a what? Of a pig. Now, that is how you are able to differentiate the alimentary canal of these two animals, so that you'll be able to read that this monogastric is a pig, this monogastric is a chicken, or is a fowl, or is a poultry. And then we need to go to the, 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 the internal structure of, of the ruminants. Now, in the case of ruminants, there is our cow. You can see there is four types of stomachs here. There is rumen, which is the first part of the stomach of a cow. And then there is a reticulum, which is the second part of the four-chambered stomach of an animal. And then the third one is omasa. And then the last one is abomasa. Now, these animals are fed different types of, of feet, not rations. There is a difference between a feed and a ration, a, 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 a ration. Now, the types of feed that we have are roughages and concentrates. But the rations are well-formulated feeds that are given to animals for different purposes. Now, in this particular case, uh, the ruminants are usually fed roughages and the, the monogastric are usually fed um, uh, concentrates. Why? Uh, chickens cannot be fed roughages. It is because they have got a simple stomach. And then on the other hand, the ruminants are able to utilize these roughages because they have got a large fermentation vessel, which is known as a rumen. They are able to utilize roughages because they have got a large fermentation, fermentation vessel, which is a rumen. And secondly, they also contain microbes. And then the microbes are important for fermentation of feed that has been consumed by the animal. Okay, so those are the uh, structural adaptations for the ruminants to be able to utilize roughages because that question is, is common uh, when you're asked, how are these animals able to utilize the roughages? I will repeat that again. They have got a large fermentation vessel, which is a rumen. And the rumen also contains microbes to ferment the roughages that are consumed by this animal. And then this is uh, now the... the the large uh, picture of the stomachs only, the omasam like I've shown before, the, the, the abomasam, the reticulum, the omasam, and uh, finally, the, the, the abomasam. Um, abomasam, I can't see it here, but it should be in this one. Okay, now, the most important thing that we need to know about uh, these types of four stomachs, the last part, which is abomasam, is the same as chickens because it functions as chickens because it, it, the type of digestion that, that takes place there is chemical. It takes place simply because of the enzyme or gastric juices that are there.
And then uh, these are the pictures for the rumen. This is how the rumen looks like. And this is how the reticulum looks like. And then this is how um, the omasum looks like. And then this is how the abomasum looks like. Now, uh, just a little activity. Like I've said before, now we're given a picture here. There is two pictures, diagram one and diagram two. And here in this particular activity, we are asked to name the farm animal whose alimentary canals are represented in diagram one and two. Now, like I've said before, when you're asked to name, you write uh, the, the name of the animal, whether it's a chicken, pig, or a cattle. But when you're asked to classify, then you can say it's a monogastric or non-ruminant. But in this particular case, we are asked to name the farm animal. Now, diagram one is a chicken. Diagram two is a ruminant because, ladies and gentlemen, we are asked to name the types of animals. We only do that activity for today because of time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us go and pass agriculture sciences uh, during these final examinations because South Africa is waiting for you to serve its ever-increasing population. In those few words, I would like to submarine. Thank you.